Hi, this is part four of 5.1 quadratic functions. We're going to talk about x and y intercepts of quadratic functions now. So if you look at the three parabolas that are drawn on this slide, you can see that if the parabola opens up and it's above the x-axis, that means there can't be any x-intercepts. It's not possible because it opens up and that minimum value fell above the x-axis. And the same thing happens if it opens down, but um, it opens down, but the vertex is below the x-axis. There's no way it will ever cross. Okay, so that does happen sometimes. Then we have the possibility when there's only one x-intercept. And that's when the vertex actually falls on the x-axis and the vertex is the x-intercept. And then you have the typical uh, two intercepts and that's where it crosses the x-axis twice. Okay, so those are the three possibilities. All right, so now we're going to look at, uh, given a quadratic function, find the y and the x-intercepts. So first, to find the y-intercept, all you have to do is set x equal to zero. and evaluate the function when x equals zero. Um, to find the x-intercepts, what we do is we solve the quadratic equation um, f of x equals zero and we find the intercepts. So we will be solving quadratic equations and there's a couple of different ways that you can do that depending on what the uh, equation is. So that might involve factoring. It could involve the quadratic formula. It could also involve uh, completing the square. So um, we'll see um, what would be best in each case. So let's look at this example. Find the y and x-intercepts of the quadratic f of x equals x squared minus 5x plus 6. So let's start with a y-intercept because I think that is the easiest to find. This is where we set the x equal to zero. So everywhere I see x, I'm going to substitute zero and I'm going to simplify that. So f of x is equal to zero squared is zero minus five times zero is zero plus six which is six. If you'll recall, I told you in an earlier video that C, AX squared plus BX plus C, C is your Y-intercept. So the Y-intercept in this case is zero, six. So that was easy enough. Now to find the X-intercept, we set F of X equal to zero. When we're finding the X-intercept, we set X equal to zero. So we're doing the reverse. So uh, 0 equals x squared minus 5x plus 6. Now, I think that the easiest way to solve this would be um, the factoring method. So this is where we write the, the uh, trinomial that we have here as a product of two factors. And then we set each factor equal to 0. And we solve and we find the possibilities for x. Okay, um, I think that's the easiest way to do it. So let's factor this. This factors into two binomials. And this should be review. And the way I do it is I know that x times x would be x squared. Um, to get the 6, two numbers would go there and there. So what I'm going to ask myself is what would I multiply together to get 6? What numbers would I multiply together to get 6 but add together and get this middle term, which is negative 5? And I think that would be uh, negative 2 and negative 3 because negative 2 times negative 3 is 6. 
and negative 2 plus negative 3 is negative 5. So I'm going to just put in minus 2, minus 3 there. And then now that we have that, uh, we set each of those equal to 0 because what happens is if you've got two factors, something times something else, and it equals 0, then one of those factors have to equal 0. So either x minus 2 equals 0 or x minus 3 equals 0. So we set those equal to 0 and we solve quickly and we get x equals 2 and we get x equals 3. So the two intercepts are 2, 0 and 3, 0. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to show you another way to do uh, 0 equals x squared minus 5x plus 6 if you don't feel comfortable factoring. So hopefully you've heard of the quadratic formula. It's supposed to be review. And it says that x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now the a, b, and c you get from the function when it's in general form. So we're going to identify our a, our b, and our c. If the function were not in general form, you would put it in general form first before you use the quadratic formula. Uh, a would be 1, b is negative 5, c is 6. So substituting it into this formula here, we have x equals negative b uh, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. So notice I'm rewriting the whole formula, but instead of variables, I am putting parentheses because I'm going to sub numbers into those uh, variables. So everywhere that I see a b, I'm going to put negative 5. And everywhere I see an A, I am going to put 1. And everywhere that I see a C, I am going to put 6. Okay, so now we're going to simplify. So X equals 2 negatives makes a positive 5, plus or minus the square root of negative 5 squared is 25, uh, minus 24, all over 2 times 1, which is 2. So that's 5 plus or minus the square root of 1, because 25 minus 24 is 1 over 2, which is 5 plus or minus 1 over 2, which means that it can be 5 plus 1 over 2, or it could be 5 minus 1 over 2. And 5 plus 1 is 6 over 2, which is 3. And 5 minus 1 is 4 over 2, which is 2. So x either equals 3 or x equals 2. OK, so we're going to do another. OK, we're going to do one more. Find the y and x intercepts of the quadratic function f of x equals 4x squared minus 12x minus 3. So to find the y intercept, remember that you set the x equal to 0. However, if you remember, if you set everything equal to 0, that leaves the c, which is negative 3. Okay, so now to find the x-intercept, we set the y equal to 0. So 0 equals 4x squared minus 12x minus 3. Now, it's a quadratic, so you can solve it or try to solve it by factoring, which I tried to do this earlier before doing this presentation. and it didn't work so we're going to have to use another method because it, it can't be factored and we're going to use um, the quadratic formula so just to recall x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared 
minus 4 AC all over 2A and A is 4, B is negative 12, C is negative 3. So if we fill in the A, the B, and the C, we end up with uh, negative negative 12 plus or minus the square root of negative 12 squared minus 4 times 4 times negative 3 over 2 times 4. And so negative negative 12 becomes a positive 12 plus or minus the square root of negative 12 squared is 144. Uh, negative 4 times 4 times negative 3 is plus 48 all over 2 times 4 which is 8. So then that becomes 12 plus or minus the square root of, a, of 192 over 8. And then I'm just going to plug that into the calculator. I'm going to put in 12 plus, 12 plus square root of 192, and then 12 minus square root of 192. And then I'm going to, um, I am going to simplify both. So uh, I get x, when I subtract 12 minus square root of 192 over 8, I get negative 0.23. And when I add 12 plus square root of 192 divided by 8, I get 3.23. So the x-intercepts are uh, 3.230 and negative 0.230. So x and y intercepts there. So your turn to try. So pause the video. Try to find the x and the y intercepts of this function. Unpause. And then we'll figure it out together. Okay. So hopefully you have found the x and the y intercepts. The first thing that I want to do is I want to rewrite this uh, so that it's ax squared plus bx plus c. This is the same one we had earlier where a was 1 b was negative 6 and c was 13. So in this case uh, the y-intercept is 13 because 13 is c. So the x-intercept we have uh, we set the y equal to 0 so g of x equals 0 Let me think, are there any factors of 13 that add up to be negative 6? And I think not. So uh, let's just do our quadratic formula. And we're going to sub in some numbers. For B, we're putting in negative 6. For A, we're putting in 1. And C, we're putting in 13. So we get negative negative 6 would be positive 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 13 is 3 is 12. 4 times 1 is 4. 52 over 2. So we get 6 plus or minus the square root of negative is this 16 over 2 which is going the other way here because I ran out of space. Um, square root of 16 uh, is 4 and it's negative so it's an imaginary number. So um, you, you can't have the square root of a negative number. So what this means is, it means that uh, there are no x-intercepts because this, um, this, whereas it includes an imaginary number which we we can have when simplifying on the graph, it's not going to cross the x-axis. So if you have a negative underneath the square root sign, when you do the quadratic formula, that means there's no x-intercepts. 
Okay, so now let's talk about graphing. Let's graph the uh, quadratic equation. So um, a couple ways you could do this, um, you, you could um, plot points, um, but it, it's helpful to start with a vertex. So the vertex, let's start with H, negative B over 2A. So negative B is negative negative 6 over 2 times 1 which would be 6 over 2 which is 3 and then for the K I'm gonna plug that 3 back in so 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 3 so that's uh, 9 minus 18 plus 3 so 9 minus 18 is negative 9 plus 3 and I get negative 6 so the vertex is the point 3 negative 6 so I would start there so go right 3 and down 6 alright that's also your axis of symmetry right and then from there you could make a table of values you could make a table of values and then um, you could put 3 in the middle and then you could put negative 1 I'm sorry negative you could put 3 in the middle and then put two points on the left of 3 and two points on the right of 3 so those points would be 2 and 1 and then 4 and 5 and you could sub those in and get numbers here in the f of x and then you could plot those but what I want you to recall is that um, that 3 right there that's your c that's the y-intercept right so 0, 1, 2, 3, I know I have a point. And then what's cool is this is 1, 2, 3 spaces from the axis of symmetry. So if I go 1, 2, 3 spaces to the right, um, that is also a point. So I have three points, which is definitely enough to, to graph this thing. Um, but you're definitely welcome to, to put in other points. So... Um, if I wanted to put in one or two or four or five, I could I could do so. Um, now I'm just and and I would I would say that it might be a good idea just to make sure that you're going through the right points when you're down here. Um, but you get the gist, the basic gist. So if you have the vertex and the y-intercept, then you know three points and you know enough that you could sketch out that um, that parabola. All right, so let's do another one. So we'll start with negative B. So H is negative B, which is negative 8 over 2 times negative 2. Because A is negative 2, we get negative 8 over negative 4, which is 2. And then K is negative 2 times um, 2 squared plus 8 times 2 minus 8. So that's negative 2 times 4 plus 16 minus 8. So we have uh, negative 8 plus 16 minus 8. We get uh, 8 minus 8, which is 0. So we have the point 2, 0. All right, so that's also the axis of symmetry. And then this is our uh, y-intercept. So if I go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 is off the graph, but I'll still do it. And that's two spaces away from the uh, axis of symmetry. So two spaces, the opposite direction is another point. And so again, you have enough. Now you could go in and plug in some other points just to make sure, but you have enough to graph it. All right. So if a ball is thrown upward from the top of a building, the ball's height above the ground can be modeled by the equation negative 4.9 t squared plus 24 t plus 8. When does the ball reach the maximum height? What is the maximum height? And when does the ball reach the ground? So, um, you know, this graph all right, so 8 is the intercept. This graph is going to look something like that. 
And I, I know it's going to look like that because, one, the negative tells me that it opens down. Eight, that's the, the y-intercepts. Okay, so I've got a vertex there. All right, so when does the ball reach the maximum height? So uh, this is your time. This is your height. So it reaches the maximum height here. And this is the maximum height. So when they ask for maximum and when, they're asking you for the vertex. So the when, that is asking for your time. So this is your H. And then what is the maximum height? That is your K. So A is negative 4.9. B is 24. C is 8. So H is negative B. I'm going to try this again. H is negative B over 2A. So negative 24 over negative 9.8. And if I do negative 24. divided by negative 9.8 I get uh, 2.4489795 etc etc so it's about 2.45 seconds so then what is the maximum height? That's the K. So that's when we're going to substitute um, in for T what our H equals. Now you can either sub in that um, 2.45, but that's rounded. Um, the more accurate and exact is going to be if you were to plug in this fraction 24 over 9.8 and the two negatives made it positive. So I could plug that in that way. So then if I did in my calculator negative 4.9 times 24 over 9.8 squared plus 2, 24 times 24 over 9.8 plus 8 I think we get 37.39 um, feet alright so now we need to find when does the ball hit the ground so the ball hits the ground, when the ball hits the ground, the height equals zero. So we need to solve the equation um, when the height equals zero. And the height is the y, so basically we're finding the x-intercept. So I've run out of space here, so I need to write the equation on another sheet. So I'm going to put it right here. So h of t is equal to negative 4.9 t squared plus 24 t plus 8 and we're substituting 0 in for h of t and I don't even want to try to factor this <laughs> okay um, so let's go ahead and label our A, our B, and our C so we can use the quadratic formula. So remember the quadratic formula is negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A.
and we're going to substitute in 24 for B, negative 4.9 for A, and 8 for C. And uh, we end up with negative 24 plus or minus the square root of 24 squared which is 576 uh, negative 4 times negative 4.9 times 8 is positive 156.8 all of that over 2 times negative 4.9 which is negative 9.8 so we get negative 24 plus or minus the square root of 576 plus 156.8, which is 732.8 all over negative 9.8. So now I'm going to put this in my calculator twice, once with the plus, once with the minus. So negative 24 plus the square root of 732.8 divided by negative 9.8 is negative 0.313 um, seconds and that's negative it's seconds that doesn't make sense we'll talk about what that means in a minute so we're going to do the same thing but we're going to subtract first and we're going to get 5.211 seconds and so what's happening here is okay here's 8 right there you have this parabola we already talked about this was what 37 2 point something 37 point something um, we just found the x-intercepts so one of the x-intercepts this one right here that one makes sense that's where it hits the ground this one we just have to make the problem work so it doesn't have any meaning this one right here in context of the problem so this one on the right hand side is the only one that we're going to be worried with in this case so that's 5.211 so it hits the ground at 5.211 seconds. All right, so you guys try it. A rock is thrown upward from the top of a 120 foot, I'm sorry, 112 foot high cliff overlooking the ocean at a speed of 96 feet per second. The rock's height above the ocean can be modeled by the equation h of t equals negative 16t squared plus 96t plus 112. When does the rock reach its maximum height and what is the maximum height? So that would be the vertex. And when does it hit the ocean? Okay, so try that. Pause the video and then come back and we'll go over it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do this. Um, A is negative 16, B is 96, C is 112. So the H of the vertex is negative B over 2 times negative 16. So negative 96 over negative 32 is 3. I like when we get ni nice numbers. So 3 seconds is when it's going to reach its maximum height. What is the maximum height? That's where we're going to plug that in here. And we're going to get two 
256 feet. That's the highest point that the rock reaches. So when does it hit the ocean? The ocean will be at the height 0. So 0 equals negative 16 t squared plus 96 t plus 112. So if we're putting it into the quadratic formula, I'm putting in 96 here and here, negative 16 here and here, and 112 there. So I get x equals, and then negative 16, negative 96 minus the square root of 96 squared minus 4 times negative 16 times 112 divided by negative 32 and you're going to get 7. If we do addition instead on the top and then divided by negative 32, we get negative 1. This is the one that um, that we'll take. So 7 seconds. It hits, it hits the ocean at 7 seconds. Looks like we're finished with 5.1. Let me know if you have questions.